I had actually been on the faculty development committee and there was a senior faculty member who was also a uh, senior biology member, Lester Cooper Freitag. She had seen that some other colleges and universities had teaching and learning centers for faculty development. There was a, um, a uh, search for a director and so I thought it would be a great opportunity. So I applied and Ruth applied and so we were chosen as co-directors and I think we were the only two applications so anyway. <laughs> But you know, in hindsight, it worked so well. And I was really interested in innovation, and I wanted to help people be comfortable with innovation. But I also wanted to get out of the silos of UC, because even when I started in 1993, the silos were really apparent, but there wasn't a lot of cross, not just cross-departmental, cross-college, cross-university conversation. So when Bev and I uh, started the Learning and Teaching Center, we were really interested in creating conversations. I've had the good fortune to be a co-director with three different people. First with Ruth Benander, then with Rita Kumar, uh, and then with Brenda. I assumed the first distance learning director position at the college in 2013. And at that point, Brad and Ruth were the co-directors of the Learning and Teaching Center. And so we immediately decided there needed to be a connection. I began uh, right before the pandemic in spring of 2020, um, working as a co-director with Brad Mallory, um, who has taught me all the ropes of becoming the director. I had been involved with the Learning and Teaching Center um, pretty much all the time that I was have been here at uh, Blue Ash, which was uh, since 2001. And, um, you know, participating in the activities and the professional development opportunities that were put out by the center and then also as a facilitator occasionally for you know some of the workshops. The physical space of the Learning and Teaching Center has changed radically over time and yet not at all. I remember it having like a long uh, kind of conference table and you could move the tables a little bit. There were a few computers along the sides of the room, you know, just like computer desks, two or three, and they had special things like SPSS that faculty could go in and do some statistical analysis and things like that. Um, there was a, like a coffee and teapot, and it was a real, and even like an IKEA futon, I think, sat in the room. It was like lime green or something like that. Um, but it was just a space that you could go to. The Learning and Teaching Center was fortunate to re receive funding through the Faculty Enrichment Center in Clifton to be able to outfit that center to have um, better technology, um, better, more usable and flexible furniture, um, better carpeting and a different room arrangement that'll allow us to stream into and virtually attend workshops through the Faculty Enrichment Center, which is a great plus, and just make that, generally make that space more usable. It's always been the people. It's always been the people and the content because we did go from the crummy third floor room to the very nice center to Zoom and WebEx and a lot of things have stayed constant. You know, it's the people and it's the content. It's being able to share ideas, learn from each other and have that group and it really doesn't matter where we've been located. The Learning and Teaching Center really weaved the scholarly teaching into the fabric of what we do here at UC Blue Ash and has really made a huge impact on learning for our students and the way that our faculty teach. Teaching is about learning, so um, you can never uh, learn enough uh, to teach. And so uh, using the Learning and Teaching Center has allowed me to be more reflective about my own teaching. Uh, I really think through how I produce uh, content for my students, what I include, what I don't include, um, and how to get my students more engaged in that process. We've done some practice activities in that room that, which is very helpful to being able to go back to a student to say, yeah, I, I know this seems a little complicated, but if you'll try it this way, I found that very helpful. You become very authentic when you've had to struggle through it yourself. Participating in the Learning and Teaching Center, I think, changed the direction of my whole career. I viewed my time at Blue Ash College, Raymond Walters College at the time, as a short-term gig. I was going to go back into industry and into consulting. 
And by participating in a faculty learning community early on in my career, I really um, felt, I learned that Sotal Scholarship of Teaching and Learning is a field and a field you could really dig into that could keep teaching interesting throughout your entire career by experimenting, learning how to do things different and better. Um, and previously I thought I might get bored teaching the same thing over and over again. And um, I learned that that's not the case if you do it well and you reflect on it and you look for those best practices and you're constantly improving. And um, that's why I'm here decades later. And I think that's why so many faculty love teaching here is because of this culture of experimentation and connection with the field of teaching and learning. I think one of the biggest areas that's been a boon for the Learning and Teaching Center is the learning communities that they've sponsored and the way that faculty can get involved, not just as a learning community member, but also in leading those learning communities and all the different areas where faculty can share their expertise and, and do that collaboration with faculty. But I also see the Learning and Teaching Center has really expanded in the education for faculty that they provided related to distance learning and online teaching. And they've really done a great job of reacting to our changes to a new learning management system with Canvas. Also, um, being proactive in that area of uh, preparing faculty for how to teach online when we have had to do that during the um, pandemic. We were pretty proactive, uh, as proactive as you can be uh, when a global pandemic hits, uh, but we were pretty proactive and ready when uh, word came down that we were not going to be coming back from spring break. We were able to quickly transition and um, help faculty um, work through that process and learn the technology they needed to be effective uh, as we moved into that remote space. I would say one of the most important contributions the Learning and Teaching Center makes is it provides an opportunity for faculty and staff to get together around issues that are important to um, the college community. Um, so our programs are open to everyone um, to participate in and I think that provides a sense of camaraderie at the college. Um, I think that's one of the reasons it made this one of the best places to work, <laughs> is because we have that collegiality um, among faculty staff uh, because of our dedication to serving our students' needs. It's a safe environment for us to take on new tech, to try new things, to be pushed a little. Uh, to actually jump into it. Not sure I would have ever started Canvas if I hadn't slightly been pushed to do it. I think it is unique um, in that our offerings are so high quality and um, well respected around the university and the number of different workshops and seminars and faculty learning communities that go on are really incredible given the size of our learning and teaching center and the way that we try to be um, frugal with resources. And the only way that that has been accomplished has been through the devotion of the leaders of the learning and teaching center and their generosity and their expertise and general awesomeness. I see great potential in terms of uh, the kind of programming the learning and teaching center can offer. Uh, you know, with the changing trends, both in technology, instructional technology, and the way our students are learning these days. Uh, the Learning and Teaching Center has an immense scope to be able to support faculty through those changing trends, to keep them up with uh, how to support students um, as our learning environments change. I think we're, you know, heading into a new realm now post-pandemic. Um, with new technologies, with new expectations about teaching. So I think it's, ex it's an exciting time uh, to be uh, teaching and, uh, and certainly there will be much that uh, the Learning and Teaching Center will be doing uh, to help us as we rethink the way we teach, how we teach, where we teach. I feel like we've got a really good model with rotating in different faculty. I think every time we have a change of directors, we have a new emphasis because of their passions and interests. So there's some things that are constant. We're still gonna do faculty orientation. We're still gonna do you know, some of the standard learning communities. But I think bringing the passions of different faculty members from different disciplines in really lets um, the center get rejuvenated 
and kind of take on different challenges or different opportunities. Congratulations, Learning and Teaching Center, on your 20th anniversary. Congratulations, faculty, staff, and students who have made this anniversary possible. Congratulations on your 20th anniversary, Learning and Teaching Center. Happy 20th anniversary, Learning and Teaching Center at UCBA. Congratulations, UCBA, on the 20th anniversary of the Learning and Teaching Center. Congratulations, Learning and Teaching Center, for your 20-year anniversary. Learning and Teaching Center, I am so proud of you uh, for, for continuing this, for all that you do, for your hard work, for what you bring to the faculty of this college, to the students of this college, to what you bring to the entire university. Congratulations, Learning and Teaching Center, on your 20th anniversary. Here's to 20 and 20 and 20 more.